In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make money as an artist. No, this isn't a make money quick scheme video. No, this isn't a step-by-step -step process either. Rather, it's a mindset guide that helps you think a certain way. And this is only truly helpful for people that feel like they're artists, that want to make money off of this. So if you don't aspire to be a successful artist, click away from this video. But if you do, you've come to the right place. I want to be an artist because I think the most successful artists, the ones that actually get to do whatever they want to do, they live the freest lives. And I want to live that life. So in this video, I'm going to explain the mindset it requires to get to that point. But before I show you these steps, I want to tell you the story that gave me the idea for this video. I was taking a walk in Rome the other day, enjoying myself, enjoying the view, enjoying the woman and the food. And as I was walking through this shopping block, I came across these street artists that are posted up in their mobile studio sketching tourists for chump change. Usually 20 euros would get you a sketch, and when my friend saw this, she described it as fast food art. Cheap and dirty, and you rarely remember the taste. But just because she called it fast food art, doesn't mean these people were pushovers by any stretch of the imagination. Don't let the prices fool you. These random artists on the street are more technically gifted than most of the art students I know. The way they hold a pencil, the way they caress the surface of the paper, these artists are the real deal. Some of the most talented people I've ever seen. Yet they sit in the scorching sun, shucking and jiving, trying to entice tourists to spend money on them. I saw this one artist, this old guy, probably half his life has passed by, painting this beautiful Russian woman with lip filler, while her 6'3 Slavic boyfriend stood on the side taking pictures for her Instagram story. After he was done, the old guy asked her if she wanted him to sign the drawing, and she said no. She didn't even ask for his name. She took the picture, and took a picture of it, and posted that picture on her story, while he just took his money, and moved on to scamming the next client. In the perfect world, this guy will be sitting in his art studio with a cup of oolong tea, painting the sunset, or the same Russian chick with lip filler but naked. Or he would be in an air-conditioned lecture hall, planning the love and passion of art into the next generation. Yet him, and many others like him, are in the streets, in the scorching sun, begging tourists that won't give them the time of day that they're worth the trouble. And I thought, man, this is so unfair, this is ludicrous. He probably felt the same way when he was younger, but learned to accept it, but me, I don't want that. I want the fruits of my labor to mean more than some random woman's Instagram story. I want more than that. And this feeling of frustration is what shifted my mindset on how I approach life and what I want to do with it. And I came up with a four stage plan on how I want my life to go. Starting with recognizing you're in the rat race. The traditional definition for the rat race is an endless self-defeating or pointless pursuit. The phrase equates humans to rats attempted to earn a reward such as cheese in vain. <laughs> Traditionally, it's a race where people put themselves through endless nonsense work that they don't really want to do to get the furniture, the cars, the house, the vacations they think they want, even though the rest of their waking life sucks. I always thought I was free from that. Most pursuing artists think they're free from this too. I know several art students that decided dramatically that they want to do art instead of accounting, and good for them, but they're poor. Just doing what you want doesn't free you from the rat race. What does free you is being able to live off doing what you want. I would gladly sacrifice a six-figure job of mindless work for me to do me living a lifestyle without anything. But most people don't have that second option, including me. Yet I've been around people, including me, who talk about their dreams of being famous or being rich or making it when we can't even get the scraps. And so in the world of artists, another rat race slowly pops up. And I like to call it the art race. Get it? Because you flipped the R and the A. And a lot of people don't recognize this. They get caught up in, oh, I'm going to quit my job, work as a server while I chase my dreams of being a ballerina or something. But there's a giant gray area between making it and being in the gutter that I want to talk about. But before I talk about that, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of my current situation. I have a YouTube channel that's been flopping for the past two years, mostly because I've been making random videos that are too esoteric for their own good, but have garnered a pretty loyal fan base of people that listen to me. And so I'm at a stage in my life where I'm slowly starting to get pissed off because I'm being recognized by creators that I respect, yet at the same time I'm watching all these people level up in the world while I'm still running so hard just to stay in place. At this point, I can put out whatever I want, and a few hundred people at least are willing to listen to me, which would have been nice when I was 14, but I'm 41 now. I have two kids I gotta raise. I need upward momentum. I can't run in place anymore. Half my life has already passed. Everyone keeps calling me underrated, which is nice, but you know what's more important than internet clout? Credit. I guess you could call me a starving artist, and that's a term that I would have embraced when I was younger, but I don't want that. The most popular starving artist of all time is Vincent Van Gogh. Everyone loves Van Gogh. He's at the pinnacle of a poetic story about a man that was misunderstood and died with nothing, but then afterwards, the world finally understood and embraced him. But there's this underlying legacy of pity that is attached to Van Gogh's name. When people talk about Van Gogh, they don't just talk about how good his art is, but also the fact that he was miserable and broke alongside it. As talented and as brilliant as this man was, the world still pities him. I don't want to be pitied. If a small meteorite fell from the sky right now and landed on my face, you could say about me, oh, what a pity. But otherwise, I don't want your pity. I want to be successful. But what is success? 
Is it millions of dollars and a lot of women on your dick? Yeah, of course. That's what I dream of when I'm bored. But at this stage of my life when I'm still a slave to the art race, this shouldn't be my focus. As a slave, your focus should not be an empire. Your focus should be to not be a slave. And that leads me to stage two, escaping the art race. Some people really love to help others, whether it's volunteering at the homeless shelter, being an ICU nurse, or picking up garbage at the garbage park. Some people really care about helping others. And I'm not one of those people. I don't really care about any of that. I've never really cared about people that much. The way that I help people is by helping me. I help my fans by helping myself and giving that to the fans in a fun package in exchange for praise. It's selfish, it's not altruistic, I don't care that you're upset. All I'm thinking about now is getting out of the art race, doing what I like, which is receiving compliments for epiphanies I had when I was 14. And so if you're an artist, this should be your goal too. Your main focus right now should be to get paid from doing something at least on the path to what you want to do, just enough that you can afford the necessities. All those other distractions should not occupy your mind at all. Even if what you're getting paid for isn't exactly what you want to be doing, your focus should be on getting as close to as what you want as possible. If you're an engineer and wanting to be a painter, what are you doing in engineering? I've estimated that in order to live off doing me, I need about 100,000 subscribers as well as other viewership stuff. I can't say this is the end of my ambitions because I dream of much bigger things, but this is what I believe is the step I need to take to make it out of the art race. After all, if I can't even get to this point, the dreams I have beyond that have no chance of coming true. But unfortunately, most people don't even make it out of step two for a variety of reasons. They feel they're not good enough, they lose motivation, whatever the reason may be. Me personally, I don't have that problem. I have enough ego to believe that I'll make it out on my own because of my ego. And so if anyone's watching this and is doubting themselves thinking I might not make it, I believe that the people that were chosen to make it out, make it out. And I chose myself to make it out. So take that for what you will. But for those that do believe in your abilities, continue on to part three. And that leads us to the maintenance of success. If you're able to wake up in the morning and not be on anyone else's schedule, only your schedule, congratulations, you've escaped the art race. I haven't made it to this point, but I know people who have, and I know what their priorities are now. Getting to this point means, in the capitalist sense, that you have made it as an artist. This is your career now. You're someone that's able to make enough money from doing art, and now it's about maintaining your success and actually building your empire. Or you don't have to. This is the area where people have the flexibility to go their different ways. I know photographers that got here and are happy here and don't need to progress and take pictures for Vogue. I also know people that got here but feel nothing and want even more. I fall under these type of people. I have faith that I'll at least get to this point in the near future and be free from slavery forever, but to me, it's not enough. There's this thing that I've been chasing for a long time now, and maybe I'm completely alone in this, but I wanna see it through. Which leads me to the next stage, magnum opus. There's a famous quote, I don't know who said it, either Kanye or Hitler, they said, when a man is starving in the streets, he's not thinking of bread and water, but of caviar and champagne. And I've said throughout the video that praying for champagne and caviar when you can't even get bread is bad practice. But if the opportunity for caviar comes, I'm gonna take it. Ever since I was a kid, I've always dreamed of something grand, something larger than life. I can't explain what that is right now because it's not the time yet. I guess the best way to describe it is, it's an intellectual itch on my back that my arms are too short to get. I guess. It's the reason I decided to make esoteric videos that make no sense. It's the reason why I dropped out of accounting. It's the reason why I boarded two children. It's this thing that exists in the back of my mind that I can't open right now. But I know of others who have. All the greats, they have works that you can tell when you consume it that everything clicked for them intellectually. And all you can do is sit there and watch in awe. And I want that. I want my own masterpiece. I want my own magnum opus. I try to talk to my friends about it, but they don't really get it. And I don't think it's going to be as simple as a YouTube video, to be honest. I get a lot of praise for my videos, but I can crack these out pretty easily at this point. But this masterpiece that I'm chasing, I don't know when it's going to come. Maybe it might never come. But I think personally, for the artists that want to see it through, this is the final destination for fulfillment. Or maybe it doesn't really mean all that much. And even if I do end up making one, I'll still wake up pissed off the next day. Which leads me back to the old Jesus street artist at the park in Rome. I started this video using him as an example of a rat that didn't make it out the maze. I pitied him for being nameless. Yet, depending on who you ask, this guy can fall under any of the stages that I mentioned. He could still be in the rat race because he's gotta sell himself to tourists like a prostitute. Or he could already be out of it through this. Or he might even love painting ungrateful Russian women with lip filler. Doing that might be his masterpiece. Yeah, here I am, shitting on this guy for his honest work, not knowing any of his backstory, fully projecting my insecurities onto this guy with headcanon. Anyways, I gotta get back on my treadmill.